Uh, greetings and a warm welcome to the Comfort Corner, a palliative care series on Uncle Daily. We aim to raise awareness about the critical need for palliative and supportive care among cancer patients with the goal of improving their quality of life. Our motto, Navigating Life's Twist with Compassion, encapsulates our mission. My name is Martin Harutunian, and I am a medical oncologist and palliative care specialist. Uh, from Yolian Hematology and Oncology Center in Yerevan, um, Armenia. It is my honor to introduce Professor Stein Kaza, distinguished medical oncologist, radiotherapy specialist, and expert in palliative care. With a remarkable career spanning decades, he was appointed the first uh, professor of palliative medicine in Scandinavia, back in 1993. As a founder of the Palliative Care Unit in Trondheim, Norway, Professor Kaza has uh, been instrumental in advancing palliative care research, both nationally and internationally. His extensive contributions include serving as the National Cancer Director in Norway, uh, President of the European Association for Palliative Care, and uh, leader of the EAPC uh, Research Network. Currently, he head the Department of Oncology at the Oslo University Hospital and hold a professorship in Oncology and Palliative Medicine at the University of Oslo. With an impressive publication record of the more than 546 articles and book chapters, Professor Kaza's impact on uh, the field is significant. Uh, hello, Professor Kaza. We are delighted to have you with us today. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Very nice to be here. What inspired you to specialize in palliative medicine? I think uh, palliative care and uh, palliative medicine uh, is an integrated part of uh, cancer care. I started as an uh, oncologist, uh, uh, and in my first years, I worked with uh, lung cancer patients. And at that time, uh, we didn't have immunotherapy and we didn't have all uh, the new molecules. So uh, basically, uh, we could offer uh, live prolongation if the tumor was inoperable. Uh, and that was either... Uh, 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 radiation therapy to the tumor and the mediastinum or uh, cisplatin based uh, chemotherapy and uh, at that time uh, now we are back to the 1980s there were very little information about quality of life and how patients uh, were coping with the disease to um, to chemotherapy and radiation therapy so I was actually encouraged by uh, one of my tutors at that time uh, to also look into the patient's quality of life. And I think that's some sort of, at least for me, some of the backbone when I started also to specialize later, also in palliative medicine, that uh, the patient-centered approach, uh, palliative and supportive care, uh, need to be an integrated part of all type of cancer care. So... So, so I think it's um, very encouraging uh, to work with the patients and the families, not only with anti-cancer therapy, but combining it with uh, uh, the patient-centered approach, both uh, physical, psychological, and social. Thank you. Uh, could you share a memorable patient story that highlight the impact of palliative care? Well, uh, there are lots of uh, patients' uh, <laughs> histories I have been uh, through the last uh, the last decades. Uh, uh, I think uh, one uh, one history uh, is uh, uh, related to uh, a patient I had uh, many years ago. Uh, she had uh, lung cancer, uh, and. Uh, she had. Uh, she was living at that time. Uh, patients need to travel uh, to uh, the, the oncology center, uh, but she was living. Uh, I think it was approximately three hundred and fifty kilometers away from uh, from the hospital. Uh, she came here uh, at that time uh, to receive uh, chemotherapy, 
as I mentioned, com combination of cis platinum and etoposide. And uh, I think I ex he, she was very eager to uh, receive the anti cancer therapy. But uh, at the same time, uh, she had children uh, at home. Uh, and she was actually suffering from major side effects uh, due to the uh, cisplatin-based uh, chemotherapy. And at that time, we didn't have uh, the 5-HT3 antagonist. So uh, we uh, only used uh, the more traditional antimetric therapies. So uh, she actually complained and said, well, uh, I want to have the anti-cancer therapy. But uh, I feel sick for another 10, 15 days after I go home. And then I recover for three to four days. And then I'm back at the Radium Hospital receive, to receive another course of chemotherapy. And it needs to be uh, regionalized, uh, not only centralized. And then it's also shown, showed me that uh, it's more uh, to the patients than the anti-cancer therapy. It's, it's the family, it's the children. It's a travel, and it's the importance of uh, being at home. And uh, I, I believe that's one of the central parts of palliative care. Uh, we need to help patients uh, to live as long as possible, but also as normal uh, as possible. So, so, so I think um, to 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 combine this approach is 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 important. And and I and I believe that we see that all the time. Uh, if you open up uh, and ask the patients what's important for you, most patients uh, then uh, tell me, as this woman did, well, I want to have the anti-cancer therapy, but at the same time, uh, I want to balance it. Uh, it's important for me to uh, be with, with my family, and it's important for me uh, to be at home. Thank you. As a leader in palliative care research, what gaps or challenges do you see in current practices? Oh, <laughs> I think there are uh, uh, several uh, gaps. Uh, but before uh, I talk about the gap, uh, gaps, I think we have learned quite a lot uh, the last decades. Uh, I think we have learned quite a lot about how we can treat pain. Uh, in a better way, which is one of the symptoms that patients fear the most. Uh, when we combine, for example, anti-cancer therapy, radiation therapy with opioids, uh, we can uh, treat uh, the pain in a uh, very effective way. However, uh, if you look into the clinic and we will go into more the data from uh, uh, epidemiological studies about pain uh, control, we still see that quite a few patients, uh, we are talking about, it depends upon which cohort you're looking at, but 30 to 50% of patients with pain are not treating properly. So, so we need to work on uh, how we can implement the knowledge about how to treat the patients with pain into uh, clinical practice. So I think that's a major gap to apply uh, the knowledge we, ha we have about the effects of palliative care into daily clinical practice. Then uh, uh, another uh, condition which uh, I've been working with quite a lot, uh, that's uh, nutrition and uh, cancer cachexia. Uh, that's a big problem for very many cancer patients. Uh, and uh, we need more research uh, to understand the basic mechanisms uh, behind uh, cancer cachexia. Uh, we see that uh, uh, insight uh, might help us uh, to uh, treat uh, the condition more directly, but still uh, the standard treatment of uh, cachexia is not very very effective so that's that's an area i think is uh, is is really important and i think uh, a third area we are working on right now uh, which i think is a is a gap uh, related to um, more health services research 
because we will see in the next decades uh, in Europe, in Japan, in uh, US, in Canada, that we won't have enough staff uh, to work in healthcare because it's very staff demanding. And uh, I think at least one area we are working very actively in uh, right now is uh, how can we use uh, modern information technology uh, to make a more uh, effective, but also uh, better uh, relative. Can we change working behavior? How can we be more effective? And how can we use uh, modern information technology? I think that's that's an extremely important uh, area. And if we uh, can develop, uh, which we are doing right now through the MyPath project funded by EU, uh, wh where we are uh, making uh, and programming specific tools for use for palliative care and get that implemented into uh, cancer care, I think we can uh, improve, as I said, the effectiveness, but also the quality. So so I'm, I'm very much now uh, in my last last part of my career <laughs> to see how i i can and my group can change uh, uh clinical behavior and uh, improve palliative care for large amount of patients uh, across europe okay thank you and uh, what role does interdisciplinary collaboration play in providing holistic care well uh, interdisciplinary uh, care is essential, and I think uh, um, both in palliative care but also in cancer care in general, we have a lot of disciplines uh, working together. The the key uh, professions uh, are nurses and doctors, but we also have nutritionists, psychologists, chaplains, sociologists. Uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. and we have had a at least a tendency uh, to work in parallel so when i'm talking about and i think your question fits very well with the thinking about how can we use modern information technology to communicate between different professions and also decide who is doing what to the patients at what time so uh, we are at least uh, in our research group and uh, in our institution focusing quite a lot about how we work interdisciplinary, but also how the different disciplines take uh, uh, individual responsibilities for parts of the patient's journey and what the patient uh, needs. And uh, what advice would you give to uh, aspiring palliative care practitioners? Oh, <laughs> that's that's a hard one. Um, uh, I, I, it depends uh, where you are and where you are working. Uh, if I should use a little bit from my own uh, experience, uh, I think if you are working in an academic institution or or, or in a hospital. Uh, we need uh, more physicians and more healthcare providers, psychologists, nurses, etc., who will go into clinical research. So I think to search for uh, combined positions where you can do both uh, research and clinic uh, is extremely important because uh, palliative care need to uh, be more academic. Uh, on the other side, uh, I think as a palliative care specialist, uh, as a palliative medicine specialist, uh, I, th I think it's extremely important uh, as you raised uh, the question about interdisciplinary work. Uh, so as a palliative medicine specialist, uh, I think you need to take the responsibility to coordinate the team, but you also need to be reflective uh, around what you can do as a as a doctor, and what a social worker, and what a psychologist, and what a nutritionist uh, can do, 
So to understand and have interest in other disciplines, I think is is, is extremely important. And then I, th- I, I would think that it's also very important to reflect upon your position in a society because uh, when we hear that uh, anti-cancer therapy is improving, uh, it might uh, it's less need for palliative care. I think it's the opposite. So we, we need to be active and to inform the society about the needs for palliative care because I think it's going to be even more needs for palliative care when patients are living longer with active disease. So so I will strongly encourage uh, younger doctors also to be active in the public debate about the need for, for palliative care around the world. And how do you stay resilient and maintain empathy while dealing with emotionally challenging situations? First of all, I, I, I think you need to, personally, uh, I think you need to reflect upon what's your position uh, uh, as a doctor. Uh, you cannot solve uh, uh, all type of problems. Uh, on the on the other hand, um, as a doctor, you are very important to the patients. Uh, but uh, the most important people for the patients uh, is the family and the relatives. So, so you shouldn't uh, overestimate uh, your role. On the other hand, uh, to be empathic uh, and to be professional. Uh, but at the same time, to understand uh, the patient is 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 extremely important. Uh, and um, so, so com- to combine uh, a cognitive, um, the cognitive dimension and the emotional dimension, which is empathy, actually, uh, is extremely important. And that's something I believe that you need to discuss with colleagues. Uh, you need to practice it. Uh, uh, and I think you also need to reflect upon it yourself. And uh, I think in order to stay um, empathic and with um, daily life working with uh, serious ill patients, it's very good to discuss the patients uh, and specific cases with colleagues. To me, that's uh, the best report uh, I can get is, 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 is to discuss it because when you discuss it and get feedback, at least for me, it's more easy to go home and uh, think that today was a good day. Uh, thank you, Professor Kaza, for your insights today, and thanks to our listeners for joining us. Keep exploring palliative care and join us next time for more discussions at the Comfort Corner. Take care. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.